the Welcome Home Soldier Foundation will host 10 events this year to lend a helping hand to veterans. The Cherry Blossom Festival sold out its first weekends, making it one of the most popular events at Descanso Gardens. The Rams will play their first home game of the season against the Seattle Seahawks at the Coliseum in a few days. This will be Los Angeles' first NFL game in 22 years. Guitar lessons aren't the only ones offered at UV Fuego. Classes range from violin, vihuela, guitarron, and trumpet. The plan is to open up future stores and eventually sell their products. In San Fernando, I'm Cynthia Marin with Valley View News. This is what people came for, the cherry blossoms. Dozens of people gathered around hundreds of blooms, taking in the beauty of nature at the annual Cherry Blossom Festival at Descanso Gardens in La Cañada, Flint Ridge. Cherry blossoms are really uh, ephemeral. They have a short bloom period, so it's sort of this fleeting, beautiful moment that people can come together and see all these flowers in bloom. This year, the festival offered guided tours and discovery stations where people can compose haikus and show off their artistic skills. It's very pretty and uh, everyone is here having fun. Also featured was a special performance by Minio Station, a group that blends traditional Japanese music with Western sound. The Cherry Blossom Festival sold out its first weekends, making it one of the most popular events at Descanso Gardens. The gardens are also home to many other spring favorites in a wide assortment of colors and variety. But the main attractions were the cherry blossoms. In La Cañada, I'm Cynthia Marin with Valley View News. That beautiful melody is one of many that students at the Lluvia y Fuego Mariachi Academy will learn. Angelo Salazar is a guitar instructor at Lluvia y Fuego and says he teaches youngsters because of his own childhood experience. There wasn't many schools available at an affordable price because uh, my parents also Latino, so it's kind of like, oh, that's too expensive to go there. So we've designed a, a program here to tailor to that type of community, you know, so I'm here eager to uh, teach the children and bring that opportunity that I wasn't given when I was younger. Lluvia y Fuego opened its doors five months ago and teaches mariachi to both children and adults. Guitar lessons aren't the only ones offered at Lluvia y Fuego. Classes range from violin, vihuela, guitarron, and trumpet. The school also provides a recording studio for artists to compose and record material. The students here range in age from 6 to 60. Students are taught in small groups and they learn from instructors who share their passion for music with their students. I like how um, I learn new stuff. My name is Juan. Uh, I started this business. This business? I started this project. I don't consider it like a business because it's not really giving me, you know, like money. I'm not like that. And, then, and everything that happens here is not really for the sake of money, but for the sake of education, art, music. I want to be a malachi. <laughs> Students pay $100 a month for the lessons, but that money also goes towards buying their own instruments. In Pacoima, I'm Cynthia Marin for Valley View News. The creamy waterfall coming out of this machine is not taffy, but lucuma ice cream. Lucuma is one of the many exotic fruits used in the wide variety of flavors you will find at Helados Pops. Elados Pops is a small family-owned business located in San Fernando, serving customers fresh, handmade natural desserts. Owner Oscar Perez, also known as Pops, says his business started in 1996, but not in San Fernando. It originated in Santa Monica, Los Angeles, and Belmont. That's where Pops was created. We were there for 10 years. But that's when the economy turned sour and Pops closed down. Pero con la but with the vision of my daughter and son-in-law, we made the effort to do it again. Se hizo el de and that's how Pops came to San Fernando. That was in 2015. The business thrived. But then competition moved in. First Baskin Robbins and then La Michoacana opened down the street. 
they're trying to maximize profit, cut back, cut corners. My father-in-law makes the ice cream out of like his memory, out of his mind, you know? And, and it's an interpretation and a flavor of fruit he ate in his childhood and he wants to recreate it. He's recreating memories. They use innovative flavors like almond, avocado ice cream, and sorbets ranging in flavors from pineapple, mango, and watermelon. And no matter what flavor you choose, any of these cool treats can be enjoyed in a handmade waffle cone or in a milkshake. And it worked. Loyal customers help Pops thrive. According to Pops himself, the plan is to open up future stores and eventually sell their products. In San Fernando, I'm Cynthia Marin with Valley View News. 2011, my son was in Afghanistan and um, uh, we had some issues where he almost didn't come home and uh, uh, one of his friends did not make it home. That's when Frank Rubel Calva decided to help veterans get back on their feet and the Welcome Home Soldier Foundation was born. As a dad, a military dad, I, you know, I wanted to do something big. The foundation is a nonprofit that hosts fundraising events throughout the year to help veterans in several areas, including housing. Now we do the events to be able to uh, buy distressed hotels and turn them into transitional housing for homeless veterans. This month, the foundation hosted the Strawberry Tequila Festival in Santa Clarita to host veterans and their families. Guests enjoyed the many perks of the festival, eating, shopping, and dancing the day away to live entertainment. I love to see everybody's here having a good time. I'm seeing, you know, all age groups, youngsters, old folks. For the not so young, tequila and beer were available for sale. The Welcome Home Soldier Foundation will host 10 events this year to lend a helping hand to veterans. In Santa Clarita, I'm Cynthia Marin for Valley View News. Before we get started today, guys, with our talk about the murals in Pacoima, I want to start with the question. What do you guys hear from people when you mention Pacoima? Is it good? Is it bad? So we'll start with Sandra and then we'll make our way to Desi and then Levi. Uh, I think that question depends on who's asking. Pacoima, like, oh, I don't even drive on that side of the city and I'm just like, ah, oh, my heart. Where's Pacoima? Why do you guys choose street art as opposed to maybe painting a canvas and having it up in a museum or a gallery? So uh, Desi, maybe we can start with you and then we can go next to Levi. I would say just for the freedom. So actually, a lot of these artists that we spoke to, Levi, said that you were an inspiration to them. So my next question for you is how do you feel knowing that your work has touched so many people in the community and that they look up to you? Um, that we've got to keep going. Um, uh, Juan, the last person to speak, there is like a little brother to me. Um, and I'm so proud of watching him speak. The murals are cool, but what they're really doing is they're changing attitudes. So, uh, somebody said that people felt empowered. Like, I always try and tell people at the mural site, like, you don't have to be a painter to make change in your neighborhood. Well, guys, we're at the end of our show, but I would like to thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.